Hello, everyone. Richard Fredrickson again with you, uh, finally, uh, after a few months of uh, sabbatical that we've taken. And uh, we're delighted to be back here at Al's Steakhouse and all decorated, still decorated, with the holiday spirit, with the Christmas trees and wreaths and, and all, and uh, an enjoyable restaurant year long. And before we get to uh, start our series of interviews, with uh, beginning with the mayor, uh, Bob Odekirk, uh, I just want to share a couple of things with you, and that is number one, we're so delighted to be here at Al's Steakhouse, and I uh, want to thank George and his wife for uh, their hospitality, and want to invite you to uh, stop on by for lunch or dinner. Uh, Friday, they've got the uh, famous fish seafood uh, buffet. Saturday, of course, they've got their... Uh, Sunday, I should say, they've got their fabulous Sunday buffet. And, of course, every single night they've got the salad bar. We stopped by here, I believe, last Saturday night. And, you know, I don't know how many steaks they must go through here. Maybe 200 steaks or more uh, a week at Al Steakhouse. Oh, the butt steak, the sirloin, the T-bone, the, I had the prime rib. Uh, you take and make your choice, your decision. It'll be a right decision no matter what steak you choose. Al Steakhouse, perfect for... Uh, that business luncheon or just for the two of you. Al Steakhouse at Hamas and Jefferson in Julia. Thank you so much, good Mayor. Good morning. How are you? For uh, coming back. I'm fine. Thank you. Very good. Uh, you can, by the way, you can catch us here. If you're watching us now on uh, Channel 6, you can also catch us on uh, uh, YouTube. Go to Julia TV and you can catch us on YouTube. And I'm also told for those of you, uh, your friends or neighbors who have AT&T, you can get it us get us also an AT and T. That's up in the upper channels there, uh, and we'll put that on toward the end of the show where you can catch uh, the show at different sources. Okay, I don't want you to miss this because I'm going to ask on the air right now. He doesn't know I'm going to ask this question, but I'm hoping he's going to say yes. Can we do monthly and or quarterly interviews with you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do that. Great. Very good. Just like we rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting used to uh, being called Mr. Mayor? Are you kind of getting comfortable with that now? A little bit. It was a little bit of a, a, a learning curve there, but no, things are going well. Yeah, something you're walking down, somebody said Mr. Mayor, you don't turn around. No. <laughs> <laughs> I may, may not have heard him. <laughs> I, I have a picture, because I didn't do uh, this year, but I watched it on Channel 6, uh, the holiday parade. You look like you had a lot of fun. Yeah, we had fun. Yeah. The kids had fun. It was, the weather wasn't bad. Um, no. So it was, it's no. always a good event, but it was yeah. a lot of fun this year. The... Um, Today, by the way, we'll be, we'll be shooting this in uh, January. You'll be seeing this in January. And uh, hopefully we can put together a series, at least on a monthly or quarterly basis, where we're going to keep you updated, uh, all things considered, in the wonderful world of the city of Juliet. Um, one of the things that um, come up always at this time of the year with mayors and governors and presidents. Tonight, the day that we're shooting this, uh, President Obama is doing a State of the Union. Uh, we, are we planning to do a State of the City in, is that in the foreseeable future? Yes, it's coming up uh, next week. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce is, is throwing the, Great. their annual event. So, right. I'll be so you watch there. that in the Herald News and listen to WJOL, and you'll find out when and where. And, and uh, uh, is the public invited to that? Yep, okay. it's open to the public. Um, it's at Jacob Henry Mansion, I believe, oh, or great, Patrick. Great, I'm okay. not sure which one, but um, it is open. The chamber put, puts it on every year, and it's usually a really good event to get everyone up to speed with what's happened in the last year in Joliet and what the you know, city government sees going to happen going forward. Okay, can we can we get one one little nugget that you might be uh, sharing at that uh, moving forward? Yeah, uh, moving forward. <laughs> there's more than one, but um, probably you're going to spend some time talking about Evergreen Terrace. Um, where the case is at now in, in regards to the, the, the court case and where we see it going moving forward. Um, hopefully we're successful with the appeal process and we get out of court so we can start moving forward and making progress yeah. over on that site. Yep. Good, good. I, I only want you to go one or two nuggets because I don't want to spoil the, sure. the, the, the chamber's event. You mentioned something to me, and it's not on my list here at all, but you mentioned something that the chamber is going to be working with, associating with the Hispanic or the Mexican parade this year? Yes, I just uh, saw an email from Mary Jaworski, the president, last week that they're planning on doing an event downtown sim similar to the uh, New Orleans North event that the chamber puts on uh, to coincide with, with the Spanish 
uh, parade, the Spanish American Parade, right. Independence Day. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. There's a lot, of, a ton of people on Collins Street. It'd be great to, to have those people come downtown to an event on Absolutely. the same day. Absolutely. I have a vision of a couple of city council members. I think when the because the uh, Mexican parade for many years was just going down Collins Street. They finally did downtown, and we had some council members who were riding horses, who, I, who will remain nameless, who I believe never rode a horse in their life, <laughs> and it was <laughs> very apparent <laughs> at, at that time. Um, speaking of times, you're sitting up there in your chair at the city council, and I, because of being a little bit uh, out of action here the last <coughs> couple of months, um, I've watched the uh, council meetings, and that, by the way, Channel 6 does a great job Thank in you. covering that. Uh, the folks, the uh, uh, Garcia family kind of head up that whole production. Uh, do you ever get the, do you ever get the, do you ever want to vote rather than just when you have to, to when it gets to be a tied vote? Are, are you sitting there? Thing, you know, I, would, I, I need to vote now. I need to tell them that I'm for this or I'm against this. Yeah, it, you have an urge, to, especially yeah. if it's something positive, you want to come on in favor of it. But, uh, you know, I think keeping the decorum is, is good. And I, I really stressed, you know, when I, when I took office about empowering the council. And I think it's worked well. I think the council's responded well that they have a real leadership position. Um, I voted a couple of times I've had to vote on issues, but yeah. um, I, I think it's going well with the council. Yeah. Well, let's stay with the council for a moment or two. I, I watched the um, a couple of weeks ago because this is going to be another week. Probably the second week of January will be on uh, with the show. There was the presentation of the new courthouse, which watching this show would be about two weeks ago. Um, what was remarkable about the audience, and you and you commented about it, and, and you thank them. We had a. Uh, Democrats and Republicans from the county board were in attendance at that presentation. Now they've already had the presentation. Yes. And, and you've you've heard it as well. This was for the public and for the other council members. Um, that didn't make you feel pretty good. It did. I, I really compliment you know, our peers over on the county side for working together. Um, when I took office, that was a, one of the issues that I wanted to get in front of right away. I put together a little committee uh, with, with Councilman Girl, who's the liaison to the county. Um, Councilwoman Quillman sat in in a couple of meetings. And we basically called very informal discussions. Um, we met with Republicans and Democrats um, to hammer out a plan. It was important to me uh, to get a commitment that the, that the courthouse was going to stay downtown. I was hearing through back channels that there was a big push from some county board members to leave Joliet. Um, I thought that would have been devastating to our downtown. So I really was thankful that everyone came together. Obviously, there are different opinions on the county board, and there still are, about how to pay for it. But we, we definitely had a consensus together, and I thought it was a good example of government working together yeah. to do something positive. A good positive uh, article by Bob O'Connor in the Herald News uh, on the 12th of January. Um, and your, your comment there, your quote there, the face of downtown is going to uh, be significantly different. The modern buildings show that Joliet is a town on the come. Uh, it's not just an old town with old buildings. It's a town that's still thriving. It's a town that has a mixture of the old and the new looking forward. And I know I'm probably going to take this material from your <laughs> city, uh, the city speech, but uh, we've got the courthouse. Looks like it's, it is going forward. The timing of this because Juliet Junior College, that building now, w when are they going to have students in there? Is that, uh... there's, well, they're still in the build-out process, but again, the, the Junior College didn't wait for the state funding. When that got held up, they're putting their own money into it. So that's moving forward. St. Francis is moving forward downtown. There definitely are um, real big improvements and changes coming to downtown. Yeah. Um, and it, again, it's, it was really important to me to, to get that courthouse deal done. Because with all the other things that were happening, if the courthouse would have left, it really would have been a, a, a devastating shot yeah. for downtown Joliet. Yeah. And you mentioned at that city council meeting where all the uh, board, where many of the board members were present from the Will County Board, and the presentation finished, and and you complimented them, and then you said, "Now Chicago Street is next." <laughs> yeah. right. right, we're not done. <laughs> we're not done, mm -hmm. and uh, that will be quite a uh, quite a historic and in. Uh, appreciative day when that takes place because that will open up truly open up Chicago Street uh, the uh, good article you know in Herald News uh, on the 12th you, you can go on your archives and 
and, and, and check it out if you like. Um, with the downtown um, coming up, you know, talk about the buildings anew and going forward. And uh, somewhere in this article was talking about branding of, uh, of Joliet and, and the branding of uh, downtown. And I almost look at the branding of Joliet in you know, downtown and in uh, West Jefferson and all the way out to Keokuk, Iowa. Is that how far we go now? About, about <laughs> Close. I was out, yeah. <laughs> I was out there uh, two weeks ago taking a drive out there. And I said, I can't believe that we're this far west. And, uh, and more building, not, and a lot of uh, new buildings going up, new houses going up, more <laughs> roofs right. going up. Right. So the residents are still coming to uh, Joliet, Will County. It's still a, uh, one of the fastest growing, still one of the fastest growing counties in Illinois. Now let's ask a couple questions here in terms of, um, of, of downtown. Do you, uh, do you see these events? Now these events are going to still take place, aren't they, downtown? Yes. Okay. Uh, we have um, the first one in March, I think, is the one that Don, Don West and Dave Nelson and the Wish Upon a Star <laughs> folks take care of. It's a, I call it the Easter Parade. I think they still call it the Easter Parade. So. With the library and the museum and kind of put things together for the kids. And then there's, uh, and this, will be, uh, this won't be in proper order, but the order that I can remember. There's Kids Fest and there's Star Wars. And there's uh, the Nitro Night in New Orleans North, and now this new event with the uh, Mexican Parade and Race Fan Rally. And the new Farmer's Market, by the way, uh, I believe are going to go ahead with this. Uh, the tentative plans is to move the Farmer's Market to a Wednesday evening, say 4 o'clock to 8 or 4 to 9, something like that, and have entertainment yep. and uh, increase the agribusiness that... Uh, will have at that farmer's market. These are all things that uh, I would hope the, the mayor and the city council uh, approve and, uh, and support. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we would. And actually, um, we've talked with the city center partnership about trying to uh, book more events. It, it seems to me, especially in the summertime when the weather's nice, whatever is booked downtown, um, people will come. People from Joliet will support it. You saw uh, New Orleans North, how oh, big the crowds are yeah, for that. Great. Or for the Nitro Night or, or anything, when they have the, the vintage cars down there, people will come out. So I would love to see a situation where every weekend or every other weekend during the summer months you had an event downtown, Star Wars um, or the yeah. Kids Fest. You, you can't park anywhere for blocks around. I There's know. thousands <laughs> of people that come down. So um, it, it just I, I think the, the businesses downtown like it, the bars and the restaurants, because it's bringing people in and they're able to open up and sell to people on the street. Yeah. Um, it just seems to work really well, and it's something that I, I really encourage the City Center Partnership to, to work to develop more and more events, yeah. as many as we could. It's, it's a branding of Joliet. It's people, you know, they come and they see and they experience and they enjoy, and they come back. Right. Uh, I've talked to the restaurant owners, and you know, almost all these events, there's new people who show up for it. And the Kids Fest particularly, people from Chicago will come down to uh, Joliet. And the Star Wars thing, which is, you know, a shock to everybody. Yeah. Um, they come from all over for this, uh, this Star Wars event. And if you want to know more about that, we'll be doing a Star Wars interview later on uh, as we get closer to that event. Um, you mentioned the Evergreen Terrace the update. Is there, is there any more that we can share with that, or is that something you want to just keep back? No, it, um, we're still we're in the, the appeal process. I went to Washington, D.C. a couple months ago and sat down with uh, members of HUD, kind of pleading the case for Joliet, uh, what our intentions were um, you know, and what our intentions were not, because there, there had been some bad blood in the past. So hopefully we can get out of the court, um, win the appeal, and then start moving forward, working with HUD and with Holstein to, work for, uh, to move forward on that property, because yeah. right now we're really stuck in a holding pattern. And there's not much the city can do about it right now. The, um, every city in the Midwest, Chicago included, have to deal with the next subject, the next topic. It's always a challenge, always difficult, and so important on both sides. But uh, union contracts are coming up. I thought yeah. you were going to say snow. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, by the way. We had a little bit of snow today, the 12th of January. And uh, listening to Chicago media, you think it was going to be the, uh, you know, the apocalypse. Yeah. But it, uh, it didn't. It wasn't that bad here in Joliet. But the guys got out. The salt was out there, and we had no problem getting here 
from uh, where, we, where, we, where the camera crew, the five or six people handling this show today, uh, and Dick, Dick Schuster. Um, yeah, we, we, you've got, I saw the trucks out. Uh, I like the way they do it. You get one truck here and one truck behind, so it's, uh, it's, it's working. Yeah. The uh, union contracts. They're coming up. They're coming up. All five city unions contracts are up. Um, you know, I, I, there are talks ongoing. I can tell you I've reached out to all the unions uh, personally, um, basically pled the case for the city. Um, obviously, they're going to look out for their members, but I do think um, you know, it needs to be rem remembered that the, the city workers have a stake in the health of Joliet, the financial health. So you know, the, the, when we have conversations, that's, those are usually the way the conversations are going. This isn't a, a situation where... Um, the unions could take advantage of the city. Ultimately, everybody loses, including them. So I, I think it's important um, that they're reasonable and that they come to the table, and I think they will. And the one thing that I've really stressed, and I know there's support on the council for it, is to bring residency back. That was negotiated out about seven or eight years ago, um, where city workers are no longer required to live in the city. I think it was a mistake. I think um, people on the council at the time will tell you that was a mistake. Uh, but it's something that could be corrected, and I'm hoping to do it this time around with all the city unions. Yeah. Was it a significant number of uh, officers hiking out of the city? There's a fair amount. Uh, current employees, I'd say not many have left. Some have. But um, what we've seen from all departments, police, fire, and public works, is new hires, if they don't live in Joliet, they're not moving in. So we have, we have uh, Joliet police or firemen that don't even live in Illinois. They're living out of state. Um, n not from Shanahan or Shorewood or New Lenox, they're not even in the area. Um, and that's a big drain. Those are good paying jobs, some of the better paying jobs in our community, and it hurts everyone. It hurts our home values, it hurts um, the school systems, it hurts the private schools that aren't getting those kids. So I, I think it'd be a win to get them back in. I, you know, I think all the unions, when I spoke with them, they, they kind of acknowledge that that's something that they think needs to happen. It's just a matter of negotiating for it. I mentioned this earlier about going out to Jogi Lake, Keokuk, Iowa. We don't go quite that far. But uh, new rooftops, residences in the Joliet increase in 2015? I would think so. Yeah. I, would think, I think um, when we're looking out west, I think we also have to start trying to develop it, um, bring business, um, some economic development to that area, not just subdivisions and homes. Yeah. Uh, that's basically a one-time uh, boom for the city when, when we get the building fees. Right. But after the houses are up, the, the city share of property taxes is pretty low, and we have to provide services to all those people, police, yeah. fire, water, plow the streets. So I think um, we really need to start developing some commercial areas out there also. And when you say that, you're, you're really looking at retail? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. there really isn't room for, or logistically, the, the, these warehouses and no. things like that yeah. out there. Yeah. We have plenty of those. It's beautiful. Uh, if you haven't, uh, you know, there's, there was a traditional thing that people used to do years ago, and maybe you had to do this when the snow clears and maybe springtime, take a drive out west and discover Joliet. It's, <laughs> it's amazing, the subdivisions and the beautiful subdivisions that are out there as well, and new houses going up, new rooftops. Um, economic development in Joliet, you, you, do we have a new uh, economic uh, director? We do, Steve Jones. Um, he's also uh, the assistant city manager, so I think there'll be some changes, some personnel changes next year, and then you will see a full-time economic development director. I mean, maybe Steve Jones. He's the yeah. person doing the role right now. Yeah. I, I actually met Steve and, and, and worked with him a little bit on a couple of projects last summer, and uh, I'm very impressed with the guy. He's sharp. A, a very sharp guy, and uh, boy, he's prompt. He's got those phone calls. You call in, he's right back to you. So it, uh, uh, welcome again, officially, Steve Jones, and congratulations on. Well, I don't know. It, it's two jobs, so two tough jobs. <laughs> and uh, well, anyway, congratulations to you. Now you also have a uh, uh, another position, a development director. Um, no, not development director. Inspector General. Inspector General. Yeah. Now yes. that's also in the plans, or that's been yes, voted it, in. That's been voted and approved. He's supposed to start at the end of the month. Okay. And what is his? Role. He will be, um, what, what we've seen within the city, the police department had oversight, they had an internal affairs um, and detectives, so they would investigate their own members um, if there were allegations that something wrong was happening. 
other parts of the city, there, there w really was no oversight. Um, so there were a lot of different allegations that were rising about maybe some abuse of sick time or people that were off on disability that weren't injured or could have been working. And you know, speak with the department heads, the, you know, the, the, the street department or fire department um, bosses really didn't have the means of looking into, into those people. They basically were running their department. So the inspector general, um, it's gonna be a few different roles, but one is to definitely keep and keep, do some oversight. Um, on city employees and make sure, you know, if someone's off on disability that they really are injured, that they're not yeah. getting paid to sit at home, or if, if they're calling in sick, that they, that they genuinely are sick, that they're not abusing the system. Um, and again, there's probably gonna be a little bit more to the job than that, but it's basically oversight to, to, to cut down on fraud or wasteful spending within the city. And he'll be working uh, with the, uh, on the legal end as well. Yes, yes, Julia. yes. Yes. Uh, there's a couple of things that I, I don't have down here, but I'm, I'm just recalling uh, my conversation last time with you, last prior to becoming mayor. We did this at the, at the I think it was a department at the time, maybe it was Juliet when they first opened up. Um, the I-80, I-55 uh, hotel, motel complex that was gonna be going up there, is that still something that we can look forward to? Yes, the group that bought that property, um, I'm really impressed with, and I think the city manager and Steve Jones is also impressed with them. Um, they they brought forward some preliminary plans and some ideas, and I could, you know, obviously I don't want to speak out of turn, but they're shooting high. They they have high expectations for what they're going to do with their property. Um, if they can deliver on what they're showing us, I think everybody in Joliet will be really pleased. Um, but it's it's preliminary right now, so the. Um I almost hate to bring this up, but I, I'm going to because it's always, people think about this, you drive by it, and, and it's so sad. How about the College Street Prison? Is it ever going to ever gonna turn into the Alcatraz of the Midwest? Um, I don't know. The state owns the prison, yeah. as you know. Um, there was an offer about a year or two ago. The state wanted to sell it to Joliet for a dollar. Um, we didn't, I was a city councilman at the time, but we didn't pursue that. Um, I think going forward, if the city were to take ownership of the prison, I think we'd have to have some contingency plan on what we wanted to do. It's going to be a big liability and cost money. It's going to cost a lot of money to rehab the inside. Yeah. It's unfortunate that it was allowed to deteriorate the way it was. Um, that's a little bit out of our control. I do think ultimately, though, I mean, it's part of our city and it's, it's at a gateway. It's an entry point yeah. to the city. We're going to have to step up and do something with the prison. As you know, it's a little bit difficult with Springfield right now. They're they're at an impasse. I don't really? think the prison is. Yeah. Really? I don't think it's high on their list. But um, once they get a budget and I and, and 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 they can get back to work in Springfield, I think that that something that we could definitely talk to our elected officials. I know yeah. Senator McGuire has been very much in front of that issue of trying to get something accomplished here. So I have had um, some inquiries, just some off the wall um, inquiries, just people thinking out of the box. And, and you know, eventually one day, maybe one of those will come through. There'll be an actual financial commitment with it. So, yeah, take a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, but what a uh, you know, ten years from now, whenever five years from now, that will become. And you heard it here first: the Alcatraz of the Midwest. <laughs> it will, and a great gateway into Joliet. Right. Speaking of gateways, and uh, something that wasn't even in existence, or barely in existence, five years ago. <coughs> was center point and uh, Joliet Elwood I mean it's just an amazing piece of property out there and on the positive side all kinds of positive things and there's some negatives in terms of traffic and all of that where are you you were the first I believe to, to bring this up um, and people kind of said oh my you know rolled their eyes on this one but what about that concept of taking cobalt I don't know what that other end is called, Hollywood or Empress or whatever they, they named that other half, but it's Hobart Road. Hobart Road. Going across the displays and getting into, uh, getting a, a truck route, really. Right. Uh, getting, helping with that traffic mess that we have on 52, 53 and in and around Center Point. Yeah, I, I think it's a concept that everybody that I've talked to, including other elected officials, are buying into. Um, I think Center Point and the businesses in Center Point realize that they have an issue um, with traffic. Um, I think the county officials, speaking with Larry Walsh and other county officials, they realize that we need to do something. Our state officials realize, 
it, you know, I, I've joked that even the environmental groups are on board with this bridge, oh, wow. which <laughs> it, it usually doesn't happen with any new no. development. So there seems to be a consensus. I think it's just a matter of putting the moving pieces together and the big question of who's going to pay for it. Um, we've spoken with, with IDOT. We, I, when I was in Washington, I met with the elected officials. Our entire group talked about the, the infrastructure issues we have in the region, how um, this is a bright spot for Illinois for new development, for new economic development and for the jobs that are being created, but that the infrastructure is lagging behind, the number of businesses and the truck traffic that's coming in. So I do think there's consensus across the board. Everyone agrees something needs to be done. Um, you know, I'm hoping that in the next year you start seeing real significant movement. I could tell you speaking with um, Illinois state officials, um, they also appear to be on board and, and they really want to push this issue forward. I do think the budget impasse has had something to do with why you haven't heard a lot of talk about this also. Um, there was a capital improvements bill that was passed in, our, in the United States Congress. Um, we're really hoping that that money's going to come, some of that money's going to come to Will County to, to, to go towards this project and maybe a few others. So I think you're going to see movement in the next year or so um, on those issues. They, they, they're really if that consensus. federal money comes through and you get a piece of that action, that would be phenomenal to use it for that because it's, uh, I don't know, can they get additional information if they go to the city website on that? Uh, probably not because there's nothing in place. It's, okay. it's talk. Right. I could tell you, though, um, that, that the talks have been beyond just a bridge. We, we've discussed with uh, federal elected officials about um, adding lanes to I-80 or I-55 to accommodate the traffic because yeah. it backs up on the expressway every afternoon. So it's pretty um, a real global approach to the area. And I, I would say all the elected officials that I've dealt with are, are all pulling in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Now, um, you may or may not know it, but uh, uh, Bob Odenkirk is an attorney, and prior to that, uh, he was a police officer with the city of Joliet. And it leads me into this uh, area of questioning. Uh, we hear, sad to say, almost on a weekly basis, uh, if not monthly basis, something to do with the Chicago police in terms of you know, shooting incidences that take place or overreaction, et cetera. And then on the other end, we also have police officers being shot. Uh, our Joliet Police Department, you mentioned earlier that they, there is a, they have their own, uh, when there's a, uh, uh, someone has, uh, brings something up against the police department, they accuse someone or they, they bring a case up there. They have their own inspection. How does that work with the Joliet Police Department? And then I have other questions on that. There are um, sergeants that are assigned to an internal affairs division, and they investigate any complaint. When I was a policeman, um, back in the early 90s, Joliet changed their policy where they would take any complaint that came in. Um, I was, the rank and file, myself included, wasn't always happy about that because there would be yeah. people who, you know, it'd be retaliatory or lying. Yeah, they set you up. Right. right. But um, I, think, I think the way, and I think there was a lot of... Um, they were smart for doing that. The idea that, that we, people weren't being shut out or weren't going to not be listened to. Anybody who came in with a complaint was going to be listened to, no matter how frivolous it, it, it may appear. And I think our city, I think our police department over the years has done a great job um, dealing with, in some of the tougher parts of town, with, with the minority communities and the different community leaders. Yeah, I, I don't want to tempt fate, but I think we've been fortunate that some of the issues you've seen in other parts of the country haven't happened here in Joliet. As you know, there were a couple of police shootings last year, um, and, and they went over relatively smoothly. So I think it, it's, it's a, a work in progress, and it's a challenge, but I, I give a lot of credit both to our police department and to the different um, community leaders that have stepped up and forged a good relationship um, with our police department. Yeah, good. good work with the uh, police department, the chiefs, and the rank and file, uh, because uh, it is an issue in a lot of big cities, and whether you believe it or not, Joliet is a big city. What's the population now? Over 150,000. Yeah, 150,000 folks in the city of Joliet. Hopefully a few of you are watching the show today. <laughs> and uh, if you are, tell them that your neighbors that they can get this on AT&T, as well as uh, Comcast on Channel 6. And on Joliet TV, you go on YouTube, you can catch it there as well. Be informed, and uh, we're going to continue with our interviews with uh, the good mayor. In a, a month or so, we'll find out what's going on in the city of Joliet. And uh, there's a few other interviews coming your way. I'm Richard Fredrickson. Thank you so much, Mayor, for Thank you. Happy stopping New Year. by. Thank, Thank you. you. And Happy New Year to you, too, as well. And uh, a particular Happy New Year to your family. Thank and uh, you. thank you so much. And thanks to Al Steakhouse for 
providing this opportunity for us to uh, visit with you today. Take care.